So do you like wrestling? And do you like grabbing people? Well, look no further. I'm going to show you how to play King. My name is Judge Shrek and welcome to this beginner's guide. Okay, it's for people who actually start with the game, who uh, maybe have not played Tekken or have not played Tekken for a long time or have played a little bit of Tekken maybe in the past, but want to take it like want to start out serious now play some ranked and uh, don't get blown away so king he is the wrestler he is the grappler he is the big guy in the game he is massive he has massive muscles yeah you can see and um he is pretty good in this game to be fair that's because um, yeah all the grabs and throws they got universally buffed in tekken 8 so you're going to have a hell of a time. So this is not going into frame data and uh, we're not going to get too technical because if you want to, King has, he has a massive move list, right? So um, almost 200 moves if you count in all the chain throws. But um, if you just want to study the move list, then I guess you can do this yourself. You don't need me f to just read you through the move list. So um, instead, let's just focus on simple stuff that works, that will get you, uh, that will move you forward, okay? So I'm going to start with the jabs. So King has pretty good jabs, it's fine. He's, there are jabs in the game that are better. I mean, not, no comparison to someone like Steve, but King's jabs, they are fine, okay? So... When we're talking jabs, we want to use them to poke. Also, down one is also a good jab to keep uh, people away when they're pressing too many buttons. And uh, so is as well. Let me take a look at my list here. Um, down three. It's a good low poke or round ender. And down back three is also a quite good low poke. His lows are not crazy, so you're not getting too, mu getting too much out of them. But it has pretty good range, as you can see. So if you want to poke out your enemy, use down back three, down three sometimes, and use the jabs and down one. Okay, so so this is his poking game. It's okay. Down, down forward one is also a good uh, mid poke not crazy but it's fine okay you can also hit confirm it you can hit confirm it into down forward one two okay so that's the jabs from this you can convert into grabs okay you can do one two and then you can press one two and then three plus four it's a grab okay simple enough so if you poke people and you hit confirm, you can go into a grab. You can also use the grab on block, but be careful, people might duck it. Same with this one here, that is one to one into three plus four. Good round starter. Uh, if people are not blocking or ducking, um, it's, not, uh, it's not that bad. Another thing, you have to keep in mind is uh, people might duck the last hit or the grab. So what you can do then is you can do a you can do a low grab, okay? So if you see people if you see people try to uh, to duck away from the grab after this uh, this jab string, you can down grab them, but it is more like a it's a little bit of a guess, right? So you have to anticipate that your enemy is going to duck it. So, general, generally speaking, poking game, down one, use the jabs, down back uh, three, down three, jabs into grab. So that's stuff you can do, um, especially at the beginning for your poking game. Another good poke is forward three. It's a fast mid poke that you can, you can convert into the DDT. So that is forward three, and then you basically spam or you mash one plus two, and you're gonna get it done. You have to press it fast, okay? Also, his jab string, you can 
convert it into his 10 hit combo but i would not use it too much be to be honest because most people will see it coming that 10 hit combo is just uh, too well known for the people out there so yeah it it's it's not too great i would avoid that but if you get it down well why not okay but uh, focus more on the jabs that i just told you so whiff punishing next uh good whiff punishes Rolling Sobat, it's a forward four. That's good on whiff. And it's a it's a good enough keep out. And then we have the Shadow Lariat. The Shadow Lariat got got buffed actually. So it's uh, it's not easy to miss now. In Tekken 7 you almost always like uh, miss the enemy. So this is a high. And you would say, well it, it doesn't look too special. But uh, look at the range of this move. So it's a fast ranged move that you can use as a whiff punishing tool. So let's say you're, you're fighting the Kazuya here. The Kazuya is um, doing some kick and misses you because on that range you can you can whiff confirm pretty good. Boom. You blow them away. Another good whiff punish is forward 2-1. But that's a heat engager so I'm going to talk about that later. Now we're going to move to the risky stuff, okay? The risky stuff is Atlas Hammer. It has um, a super long startup. 23 frames is uh, a lot. And if you miss it, dude, you are so punishable. You are so punishable, you're going to get launched, okay? It is a high crush move. So that means if people are jabbing at you, you can use it to high crush their attack and then launch them. And from there, you can... You can go into this one here. Okay? So, it is a very risky move, but it can deal a lot of damage. Don't spam it, though, because you you get punished. Okay? Same goes for um, alley kicks. So, it is... A, I, I, like, I like to use it as a round ender. People don't see it coming that much, but um, you can really see the higher you get, um, people will start people will start punishing it. So don't spam these alley kicks. Um, maybe you can throw them in as a surprise attack, but um, you can also convert into a mid after one, after three hits. You can mix it up a little bit, but um, this is why it's in risky stuff. It's not, it's not too crazy. So don't spam that, it's risky, okay? And the last one that I have in my risky stuff is the burning knuckle so this move is unblockable and sometimes it catches people off guard sometimes okay but it is insanely risky because you can just sidestep it so if people see it coming they will sidestep and um then you're done maybe you can use it like this um after you get a little bit of, uh, of a launcher done, uh, after people are a little bit trapped, but don't spam it. Use it as a surprise tool sometimes, but don't don't rely too heavy on it. It is it is very risky. Okay. Moving on next, armored moves. Okay. So back three is a very good armored move. Keep out. You can just armor through the people if they are very aggressive on you and if you press one plus two fast enough you will convert into the leg drop okay that's good damage good keep out if people are very aggressive use this to get them off you and uh, reset neutral then up forward three plus four it's the boot okay the boot the big boot very good move it's armored and as you can see, you, you convert into Jaguar Sprint. Uh, Jaguar Sprint, you can manually activate it by forward and then 3 plus 4. And from there, you have lots of options. From there, you can uh, press 1 for launch, um, in heat even better. You can press 2 for a fast high attack. You can use 3 as a good mid, also tracks. And has good range. And you can use four as a low. Good round ender. And you can use the RKO. 
this is a high grab which is unbreakable so if you are in jaguar sprint you can basically let people guess okay and instead of just sprinting you can use the boot to get into the jaguar sprint so once once you're in the in the sprint and you're in their face they have to guess do you go for a grab maybe they duck but if you go, if you go for the mid then they get blown away so armored moves back three and uh, the big boot okay there's another armored move it's this one here it's down back one plus two and you can convert this into heat with two and while we're on heat already let's go to the heat engagers so um there's uh, there's uh, the universal heat burst uh, two plus three the issue with that is as you can see look at the top look at the heat bar okay look look at the heat bar it's full but if you use a manual heat engager you already lost uh, like a third of your heat bar right so if you can you want to use it um, even if the heat in heat burst is armored yeah you want to use the heat engager to get your maximum amount of heat so what are heat engagers we have the elbow impact forward to one it's one of the best whiff punishers in the game i think and it's also heat engager and it's a mid yeah it also heat engages on second hit so that's why it is a good heat a good uh, whiff punisher be careful though if you use it while you are in heat it's also it also triggers heat dash okay if you hold forward sometimes you don't want to use uh, up all your heat immediately because uh, some throws with king they will they will replenish some heat and as long as you are in heat you have an armored ja uh, jaguar sprint okay so as you can see here the jaguar sprint is armored okay and you would then want to use grabs to get the heat back now look at the heat bar there you go we just got some heat back okay so don't just waste your heat um shoulder tackle forward two plus three it's also a good heat engager you can use that that's fine yeah uh, muscle armor already said that you can eat moves especially if people are very very aggressive at the start of the round just use muscle armor it's uh it was um down back one plus two you eat their first attack they start let's say they start jabbing at you right away when the when the round starts fight they start mashing away at you you use down back one plus two eat their attacks go into heat okay so rapid king onslaught or the famous rko is also heat engager we were at that move already when i was talking about uh, the jaguar sprint okay so use that as as a tool also it replenishes heat so use it it's a it's a good it's a good one it's a good move the only way to it also tracks the only way to evade that is ducking but when people are ducking and you're sprinting at them you can blow them away with the mid as well so it's a guess it's very dangerous for the enemies okay another heat engager is freedom face buster or the pedigree but as you can see it's a low grab it's down one plus four so how can we force this well it's simple um you can use three plus four to do the the jag jaguar step okay when you press the jaguar step and then press two you use this mid and you force crouch it's also not a bad starter at the round you just um jaguar dash backwards you jaguar step backwards people with their attack and you follow up with with the two so once you did that you then press down and then one plus four okay and that will give you the pedigree or in the game it's called freedom face buster and it's also heat engage a very good move you can also use it from forward forward too any move that forces crouching will be viable but those are the ones you should focus your uh, focus on for the for the for now right for the start so now um the heat smash 
the heat smash is um, as you can see is uh, it's just a just a very strong grab don't use it in a combo try use this as a whiff punish because for some reason you will deal more damage using it without a combo so look look at the damage okay so this is just a single use that's uh, 64 damage okay now if I use this uh, if I use this in a combo It's only 55 damage so for some reason the game works like this so if you're using uh, heat smash try to use it at the end of your heat when you know your heat is running out anyways then use it and try to apply it but uh, try to apply it as a single use okay one last thing about the heat smash if they block the heat smash you convert into the sprint okay what does that mean for you you can't keep the pressure going let's say you use heat smash they block it go into RKO if you use heat smash and they duck it go for the mid okay so um, always keep in mind uh, your your Jaguar sprint it's it's a it's a really good it's a really good good move if you spam it too much people of course can can adapt to that and um, they can also blow you out of it so don't rely too much on it but it's one of King's uh, King's best moves not as good if you just do it like this if you just run at them it's very predictable but if you use it um, in combination with the big boot for example it's it's insanely good so now I want to talk about the hop knee so this is up forward four it's uh, if it's a 15 frame launcher yeah mid so use it on uh, on, use it on moments where you can whiff punish or where you can where you can block punish opponents when they have uh, used big moves and you uh, you're able to apply a 15 frame launcher and from there you can do a basic combo I, I recommend you to do uh, check out check out King's check out King's combo challenges the bread and butter combo I would go for is up forward four for the for the knee then you do uh, uh, then you do forward three. And then you do forward down, uh, uh, down forward four and three. It's this one here. So this looks like this. Okay. And then you want to use back one two, and then running wrap. Okay. That's forward 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 wrap. And it looks like this. This is like a bread and butter combo anyone can use. Not too difficult and uh, very reliable. Use this after you launch. Another launcher you have is um, is back one two, because um, back one two is actually launching on counter hit. So if you are fishing for counter hits, you can do this. Sixty one damage. That's uh, that's fine. Okay. Um, be careful though. It's a twelve frame. It's a 12 frame jab, so if people are using like the 10 frame jabs, they can jab you out of it. But um, if you're if you're doing these, if you're doing this uh, poking stuff, right? You're in the poking game, and uh, suddenly they press a button, boom. Okay, you counter them. So keep this in mind. You want to do some counter it fishing with back one two. So let's talk King's most important grab. Okay, it's the giant swing. This one deals massive damage and it has a 10 frame startup. It's probably the best grab in the game. It's a one break. So um, if people see it coming, it's easy to break. So how do you do the giant swing? It's simple. The input is forward, back, and then you do the quarter circle, uh, the, the half circle motion forward. So while you are pressing forward, you're vulnerable, okay? Forward, back means you're vulnerable. Because you press forward, you don't block. How can we, how can we cover the forward input? It's simple. There's something in the game. It's called buffering. So you can hold forward and jab. You can hold forward and jab all day. But we are already holding forward, so the game registers the forward input. Okay. So you can hold forward, jab. And then back and then into the rest of the sequence to apply the giant swing okay this way you basically protect your forward movement you protect your forward input 
by buffering it so you cannot get kicked out of it. At the same time, if your opponent is eating a hit or blocking a hit, you have frame advantage, right? So it's even easier. So don't just use the giant swing out of nowhere. Try to use it uh, while covering up covering up your um, your approach. So again, forward two jabs into the giant swing. I actually got the blue spark here. Use the jabs to cover your forward momentum to use giant swing. If people start seeing the giant swing, especially when you are with your back at the wall, because you launch them into the wall, you throw them into the wall, they take additional damage, they will expect the giant swing. So they will be ready to press one to, b to break it. You can use the Tijuana Twister. It's the same input, just instead of one, you press two, okay? To mix them up. It deals a little bit less damage than the giant swing. But if people start to break your giant swing, use Tijuana Twister. And the last, uh, one of his impo most important throws is um, um, the Tomahawk. You just press forward three times and then grab and you have the Tomahawk. There's a blue spark version of it, but it's very difficult to do. So uh, if you manage to land it, fine. But it's, uh, it's also good without it, okay? It's also one plus two breaks, so you can catch people off guard. So what is there as well? Ah, I totally forgot two moves. Um, there is a forward, forward, neutral two, okay? Forward, forward, neutral two. This move is busted, dude. On counter hit, look at the range. And look at the damage. The damage on counter hit is insane. So that move is a super fast low. People almost never see it coming. I saw someone... I think I got, it got low played only once so far. But I have not played too much, ra uh, too much ranked yet. So that might change later. But uh, use this move. Abuse it, dude. It, as long as it's strong, abuse it. And another one that is uh, forward, forward, neutral, one plus two. It's the shove. As you can see, it deals no damage. But it has nine frame startup. It's, 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 it's super fast. Okay, it's one of the fastest moves in the game. And on counter hit, you have a frame advantage of 18. So that means you get a free uh, forward two plus one, uh, two forward two one. Okay, you get free forward two one on counter hit. So yeah, use this. Forward, forward, neutral, one plus two. And forward, forward, neutral, two. So, now we're talking chain grabs, okay? There are two chain grabs King has that uh, are worth learning. If you want to get a little bit higher up there, you can use the rolling death cradle. So, this one is, um, is really good. The other one is King's Bridge, okay? King's Bridge is um, it's this one. Oh. So there you have it, this is the King's Bridge. Um, you can check the inputs for this one in, in the move list, of course. Uh, what is so difficult? What's so difficult about them is um, you need a crouch dash. Okay, so while you are doing crouch dash, you are vulnerable to mids. So that means maybe you want to use it as a, as an Oki situation like this, right? This is where you can apply them. But this is intermediate stuff. If you lap this two hours and I don't know, you, 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 you have a perfect execution, but you cannot apply these moves in the match. They won't be helpful anyway, so learn them, but um, don't rely on them. You really have to get better at the game, get a better understanding of the game in general to apply these two. But once you get there, these two chain grabs, Rolling Death Cradle and King's Bridge, they are deadly, okay? 
But like I said at the beginning, this is for beginner players. So if you're starting out with King, apply all the stuff that I told you about. Do some jabbing from the jabs, convert into the grabs. If they duck, convert into low grab. Use your jabs to cover your giant swing input. Use your bread and butter combo for your hop kick or hop knee launcher in that case. Use heat to refill your heat gauge and use armored moves to get through the pressure. If enemies are pressuring you hard, use these moves to get back your turn. So that's about King. All right, I hope you understood. If there is anything else to say, you can just put that into the comments, of course. I'm always happy if someone is also engaging with the content. So if there's something uh, you think is missing, like I said, this is more focused on beginners. If you are already in like a pro player, you would probably not get much out of that. I'm just hoping to to deliver something for the people who, who like wrestling, who like King, and they think he looks cool. King is the, cl uh, he is the crowd pleaser after all. So he's a very fun character to play. And um, he's very great. Um, he's a crowd. He's a crowd pleaser. So if you're just watching King, it's already great. So if you're the kind of guy starting out with Tekken and you want to play with friends and you want to style on them, and you need to to know where to start, this is the video for you. This was the video for you, and uh, I hope you could learn something. And with that, I would say thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. You know how it goes. And I will see you next time. Take care and have some fun throwing people around.